Welcome to Vivictus Asmati the Dire. So we have three colorless mana, black, red, and a green. Flying, whenever Vivictus attacks, for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Then each player who sacrifices a permanent this way reveals the top card of their library, then puts it onto the battlefield if it is a permanent card. Now, one of the ways to kind of basically break down Vivictus is you definitely want to be able to manipulate the top part of your library. Uh, but in my playtesting, I found that you don't want to go super heavy overboard uh, trying to set up the perfect top part of your library to take advantage of Vivictus. It is nice to do that, uh, but for the most part, uh, I found in my testing that you definitely just kind of want to have a little bit more of a Jun Good Stuff deck at the core, and then just kind of use that top of the library as kind of a little bit of a backup plan. But it's definitely something you want to run in there, but uh, it's almost kind of better if Vivictus is a little bit more of a closer for the deck instead of the actual main Punisher for the deck. Now, this is a commander. You can do absolutely whatever you want to do. If you want to build a Voltron deck, go for it. Um, I originally kind of started out Aristocrats, and that was, yeah, it's kind of suspect and I went really heavy reanimator, I went really heavy top of library, and then I kind of settled into this, basically this kind of good stuff build, and Vivictus was really good out of the command zone, being kind of basically an additional piece of spot removal uh, whenever we needed it. So that was kind of what ended up being the best build of the deck for me, but that's just my opinion. Uh, get out there, have some fun, and start building some of the stuff. But let's take a quick look at some of the cards that really work well with Vivictus, and that's going to be manipulating the top part of your library. So um, just a quick reminder, this is one versus one commander, so some of the stuff that I'm talking about it does translate into regular commander but um, I don't we don't have access to sensei's top and uh, stuff like sylvan library so that's some really good cards you definitely would include in your vine victus stack but unfortunately for this particular deck tech we are doing one versus one commander I will not be highlighting some of those cards, but those are definitely cards you want to run in there. Uh, so we get to run stuff like Miri's Guile, Scroll Rack, and Noxious Revival. Um, these are going to make sure that we have some one-sided kind of setups with Vivictus Triggered Attack ability. That's really going to help you generate some value and make sure you can kind of put a really big creature on top of the battlefield. There's some other really good options that allow us to look at the top card of our library. We have stuff like Oracle of Moldiah. That's going to allow us to start making a few extra land drops and kind of see if it's safe for us to swing in uh, with Vivictus. And then you also get to run some fun stuff like Beast Tracker, you know, Search your library. It's going to pretty much turn your library on for any sort of creature that has Death Touch, uh, Hexproof, Reach, or Trample, and then put it on top of your library. Another really good stuff to run in here is going to be some of the black cards that allow us to kind of manipulate the top part of our library. Uh, stuff like Haunted Crossroads. For one black mana, we're going to be able to put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Um, let's say you're running a reanimator package and you run something like Buried Alive. So it's going to allow you to kind of stack that on top with Haunted Crossroads. Uh, Cruel Tutor is going to be a really good tutor for the deck. It's going to go directly on top, so for three mana... You can kind of set up by Victus, whatever you want, and just look at Cruel Tutor's face. He's really excited about whatever card you're going to put on top. And there's also Dreams, which is really good. It's going to allow you to discard cards in your library, so you can discard stuff like Reassembling Skeleton or Blood Ghast, and then kind of stack the top part of your library. Let's say you're running Life from the Loam in there. So you can discard a bunch of cards, put it on top, and then the next turn kind of dredge a bunch of stuff and put all those creature cards into the graveyard. But you definitely do want to run some sort of way to kind of manipulate the top part of your library by Victus. But you don't want to go overboard. You still want to have at your core a really good jump deck. Another really good thing to run in here is some sort of threat that's going to be recurring. You want to have something that you can sacrifice and bring back really cheaply. Uh, stuff like Blood Gas and Reassembling Skeleton and Work Wonders in this deck, especially if you're taking care of some of your pro uh, your opponent's uh, problematic uh, permanents on the battlefield. And then stuff like Life from the Loam. Let's say you don't have creatures down on the battlefield and you just have to start sacrificing some of your lands. Um, Life from the Loam is going to allow you to keep your graveyard fresh, kind of keep that graveyard turned over, and allow you to keep making your land drops turn after turn. Another creature set that works really well with Vivictus is creatures that have some sort of enter the battlefield effect. That way you can get some sort of um, really good utility out of it and then sacrifice it to Vivictus. So stuff like Wood Elves, Reclamation Sage, Internal Witness, uh, you're looking at three mana and they can replace, you know, whatever sort of land spell you go with Wood Elves. A Reclamation Sage is typically going to cost one more than some sort of artifact or enchantment removal. The upside is that you're going to be able to get these on the battlefield and sacrifice them to Vivictus, which is really going to allow you to kind of get that two for one going. Uh, some other good stuff in Black is going to be Ravenous Chupacabra and Merciless Executioner. Once again, you just want to try to get that two for one on your opponent, which is really going to hit, uh, set you ahead on value. Now, if you're looking at sacrificing your creatures, it's definitely a really good option for you to run some sort of reanimator package in here. Stuff like Reanimate and Animate Dead are going to basically be some really cheap options to bring creature cards out of the graveyard. And then stuff like Buried Alive is going to help you with your reanimator stuff and at the same time, you know, set up a graveyard for Bloodgast or Reassembling Skeleton. If you are running some sort of reanimator package, you definitely 
want to run some sort of mass reanimator, something like Living Death, and of course a really good sack outlet, something like Yehini, is going to be able to get some really nice incremental value as your opponent starts to sacrifice their creatures, and you get those plus one counters on Yehini. You could also use Yehini to sacrifice your entire board for something like a Living Death too, which is always a nice option to have. Now, since our commander is six mana, you definitely will run some sort of haste option in here. Uh, stuff like Generator Servant, Fires of Yavi Maya, and Dragon Tempest. These are all great options to make sure that Vivictus, as soon as it hits the battlefield, you're going to be able to deal with some sort of problematic permanent or be able to start dealing that commander damage to your opponent. Haste is a really good thing for the deck. Um, I didn't actually have it in my initial build. I didn't have a lot of haste in there. And I quickly found that uh, it, is, it is really good to have some sort of haste option in there. You definitely want to run some sort of package on top of that. Now, outside of the haste stuff, we also have some really good stuff with the elementals. Uh, we have stuff like Omnath, Locus of Rage, and Titania. Uh, these are great cards by themselves in this deck. But you throw in a Flame Kim Harbringer, get it down for one red mana, put an elemental on top of your library, then you are good to go with either Titania or Omnath. So, really good option. You definitely want to have some sort of tutor line in your deck like this just to basically kind of set up as much value as possible now outside of that we have some really good utility creatures in the deck that really kind of help us push an alternative win condition uh, we have stuff like Mazarek that's going to get some really good value off our whatever a player sacrifices a creature um, let's say we start sacrificing lance the Gitrog monster is going to be able to take advantage of that by allowing us to draw a card then we also have stuff like Marin. so whenever a creature dies we get an experience counter that's basically kind of going to turn our graveyard online now another really really good creature in the deck is going to be it that betrays it is a little cute sometimes like you get it down but typically it kind of felt like a little bit more of a win more card but you're running a deck that cares about sacrificing so you might as well just go ahead and run it um, it has an annihilator too but the main thing is whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent uh, we get to put that card onto the battlefield under our control so you get this down really quick with some more some sort of reanimator package um, you're gonna be able to start bringing back stuff on your side of the battlefield and then also stuff like wasi Tora flying and trample whatever deals combat damage to a player we just want to keep on that theme of trying to make our opponent sacrifice creatures while we start to get some really good incremental value on our side of the battlefield now this is a gen deck i didn't want to make a slide with all the removal running we're running tons of removal and tons of ramp in here but it, you know just wanted to kind of keep it short and simple and that's pretty much what's going to be with the deck i do have three gameplay videos up for you right now if you want to head over there and check them out and if you enjoyed that video like and subscribe thanks bye Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.